When you walk around your own condensate system, you'll notice a large number of connections to various pieces of equipment. Let's look at a typical arrangement. Soon after the condensate pumps, we notice small piping connections to the chemical feed system. This allows us to fill the chemical feed tanks and mix additives such as morpholine, hydrazine, cyclohexylamine, and other products for subsequent injection into the condensate system. We will also see connections to supply condensate to the gland steam, D superheater, and to the turbine exhaust hood sprays. We also note here a recirculation connection which passes condensate back to the condenser through a control valve. This connection is used during startup of the turbine to ensure a constant flow of condensate through the ejector condenser and gland steam condenser. This is necessary because during the initial stages of startup, there will be no feed water flow to the boiler and consequently no condensate flow to the deaerator. Later, as condensate flow increases, the flow measuring element signals the recirculating valve to close. Note that all of these control valves are equipped with a manual bypass to allow some manual operation in case of failure of the control system. In actual fact, this would be difficult to manage, but it would at least allow us to perform a shutdown in reasonable safety. One other important connection in the condensate system is from the condensate fill pump, which is located adjacent to the condensate tank. This fill pump provides sufficient pressure to allow us to add water to the deaerator or the condenser when the unit is off load. In this condition, of course, there would be no vacuum in the condenser to draw water from the condensate tank. Now, at this